Welcome to Cool Career and Sally's Picks, both Sally Ride EarthCam lessons. We will be completing a few Sally Ride EarthCam on the International Space Station lessons in our Earth and Space Unit. So let's find out about the founder, astronaut Sally Ride, and her cool career. Astronaut Sally Ride, net gain for science. Even when she was a little girl, Sally Ride loved sports and science. She kept her eye on the ball playing tennis, volleyball, and football in the street with the neighborhood kids. She also kept an eye on the stars and planets, using a small telescope her parents gave her. Even though Sally led her college tennis team, she chose not to continue competing in tennis. Instead, she studied physics at Stanford University. Two firsts. Sally launched into history in 1983. She became the first American woman to fly in space and NASA's youngest astronaut. I had an unbelievable opportunity to do something very few other people have a chance to do, she said. Sally launched her own science company, which she led until her death in 2012. The company's mission is to encourage students' interest in science and to inspire them to reach for the stars. NASA, now hiring. Sally landed her astronaut job after responding to an ad NASA placed in the school newspaper at Stanford. The moment I saw the ad, I knew that's what I wanted to do, to go on that adventure, Sally said. An astronaut travels into space to explore our world and beyond. Astronauts come from many different backgrounds, including aviation, engineering, science, and teaching. And they use their different skills in space. Sally controlled the shuttle's robot arm. Other astronauts conduct experiments inside the space station, release satellites into space, study Earth's oceans, weather, and geology. Sally said, astronauts are on a timeless quest. Exploration is as central to our lives as breathing. So we are going to view the lessons of explorer astronaut Sally Ride as we learn about Earth and space. Astronaut Sally Ride found amazing views of Earth from space and it inspired her to start Earth Camp. We are going to observe and discuss some of Sally Ride's favorite images of Earth from space. We can apply our observations to understanding Sally's inspiration for starting EarthCam and to help us enjoy and learn from the experience of seeing Earth from space. Now it's time for Sally's Picks. Sally Ride said her favorite part of being in orbit was looking out the window of the space shuttle at Earth below. We are going to see some of the images that Sally often used when she gave talks about her experience as an astronaut. Sally flew twice on the space shuttle in low Earth orbit, about 200 miles above Earth. What do you think Sally could see? What does Earth look like from space? Why do you think seeing Earth from space made such a powerful impression on Sally? Up first, we have the blue marble photo of Earth. Take a moment to look at this image. What do you observe? What can you learn from this image? Earth cam photos can't show us the whole Earth because the International Space Station's orbit is not high enough to capture such a view. The astronauts on Apollo 17 took this famous image as they sped toward the moon in 1972. The International Space Station orbits about 400 kilometers or 250 miles above Earth. Our moon orbits almost 385,000 kilometers or 240,000 miles away from our planet. All right, Sally's pick number two is San Diego. Take a moment to look at this image. What do you observe? What can you learn from this image? 
This image of the Southern California city, taken from the space shuttle, shows a heavily populated urban area. However, from this distance, signs of human activity can hardly be seen. The Pacific Ocean lies to the west, and the mountains and desert lie to the east. Pick three is the Strait of Gibraltar. Take a moment to look at this image. What do you observe? What can you learn from this image? This image, taken from the space shuttle, shows the narrow strait that connects the Atlantic Ocean to the Mediterranean Sea. The strait, about 14 kilometers or nine miles wide at its narrowest point, separates Europe from Africa. Sally's pick number four is Florida. Take a moment to look at this image. What do you observe? What can you learn from this image? This oblique view of the Florida Peninsula was taken from the space shuttle. The ocean is a lighter blue where the seafloor is shallow. The larger body of water is Lake Okeechobee. All right, Sally pick number five is Hawaii. Take a moment to look at this image. What do you observe? What can you learn from this image? The space shuttle snapped this image of the big islands of Hawaii. Five separate shield volcanoes built the island. The biggest volcano, Mauna Kea, in the center is dormant. A wisp of smoke from the active Kilauea volcano can be seen on the right-hand side of the image. Our last Sally pick is the Sinai Peninsula. Just like our other images, I want you to take a moment to make some observations and think about what you can learn from this image. The Sinai Peninsula, long a center of conflict, lies between the Mediterranean Sea to the north and the Red Sea to the south. The narrow bodies of water shown in this space shuttle image are the Gulf of Suez to the west and the Gulf of Aquaba to the east. The peninsula is part of Egypt and it forms a land bridge between Asia and Africa. When Sally Ride became the first American woman to soar into space, she got a chance to look back at Earth from the window of the space shuttle. She was amazed by the view of our beautiful blue planet wrapped in its thin blanket of air. Sally realized how important it is for all of us to take care of our fragile home in space. She wanted to share that view with young people all over the world. That gave Sally an idea. If NASA put a camera in space, students could snap images of different places on Earth. Sally started the program in 1995 and called it KidSat. The KidSat camera flew on three space shuttle flights. In 1998, the program was renamed EarthCam. The EarthCam camera flew on two more shuttle flights before moving over to the International Space Station in 2001. Sally died in 2012, and in 2013, NASA renamed the program Sally Ride EarthCam. Today, the Sally Ride EarthCam camera supports about four missions a year. During missions, middle school students around the world direct the camera to capture images of specific locations on Earth. I hope you enjoyed learning about Sally Ride, seeing her pics, and learning about Earth Cam. That's all for me. Take care. Peace.